What are you cooking me for breakfast? Um, I'm gonna cook you omelet, bacon sandwich with cheese. You're gonna make that for me? Sure. You want me to hold the egg carrier while you get the eggs? Sure. Okay, how many we need for the for the cheesy? Um, I think we need four, seven or something. Okay. And we only have like this much. Looks good. It's okay. Well, let's see if there's let's see if there's eggs in the other coop too. Yeah, yeah, yeah that could be a good idea. Oh, perfect. Let's All count right. How many would count? One, two, three, four, five, six. six. All right, that's enough for yep. egg, sandwich. egg and egg sandwich for me and you. You making one for you? Yes. All right. I don't know if you have enough bread. All right. Well, we'll see. I'm Connor Crickmore, and I moved from the city to the country to become a farmer and to explore that connection between my food and the natural world. I am passionate about growing. I not only grow for the community, but also for my family. When it's time for us to eat, I gather the ingredients from our family garden and around the farm. I then cook it at our barn. Follow along through that entire journey as I plant seeds in my garden and care for the plants as they grow. Come with me on the final harvest and through the preparation of the family meal. Learn to grow and cook with simple methods with the food you grew yourself. This is Seed to Plate at Neversink Farm. Each episode, we'll follow one vegetable from seed to harvest to plate. And this time is the crunchy, sweet carrot. The carrots take a long time to germinate and grow. So while they do, we'll be free to check in on the honeybees. And afterwards, use the sweet baby carrots in a great lunch. Later in the season, the whole family will get together to harvest and jar the honey. This is certainly my kids' favorite task at the farm. Then I will show you an easy method to store your extra carrots and keep them crunchy through the winter. And when the carrots are ready for harvest, I'll gather the rest of the ingredients for a great meal. I'm gonna cook down at the barn. Let's get to growing. Hey, welcome to the garden. And uh, it's uh, May here in New York. And it's a beautiful day to get the garden started. And one of the things we want to get started early is our carrots. So I'm going to use this board to get us a nice straight planting. All right, so I just make a little furrow with my finger, you know, inch, inch and a half. All right, so you're just going to put the carrots in your hand. Uh, so that we can sprinkle them down the row. You can get them a little thick because it, it, it's okay, because we're gonna thin them later. Okay, so I gotta start from one end and just make sure I get each spot. And you can take a look at how close I'm putting them. And then on the other side of the board, boom. Just put another row and sprinkle them in. Okay, and then all we do is we take the board, put it against here, and we have another in our next row. And they're going to be perfectly even and straight. Okay, so now we just want to cover them up. Just make sure they're all covered. Carrots are hard to germinate because they have a long germination period, 10 days or more. So it's important to get good contact with the soil 
so that you can keep them wet. Otherwise, they're not going to germinate well. All right, Riv. Mm -hmm. How does the bee situation work? You put, you put, you burn, you get this, and then you put a little bit in. You make, you make fire, and then you put each hand by hand in there, and then you close it and then puff it. Yeah, don't, don't put it down yet. You gotta make sure it's going. And you just walk away slowly, okay? You don't run. Okay. Remember, can you, you're gonna put that on? Wrong way. Okay. <laughs> Other way. Reverse, Riv. Turn it around. There you go. Okay. Hey, watch out, guys. They don't have honey yet. Can we see them? We have to wait until a couple of months and then they'll start to have honey. Right now they're just trying to uh, grow the hive to get bigger. Right, so the queen is laying eggs and they're feeding the... Uh, baby. They're feeding the little babies. They're feeding them the pollen, the yellow stuff that's on the bees as they fly in. They have that yellow on their leg, that's pollen that they feed the, the baby bees. Oh, that's yeah, so they're not too big yet. This is a very small hive. When they start hatching, they're gonna fill this thing out. There you go. Okay, that's enough. There's still a young hive, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait. And in a few weeks, when the, the babies start hatching, this is going to explode in numbers and we're going to have to open again and take a look and see if they're ready for the honey. Right, we're going to put the honey super on, on top, that they can make the honey in. So in a few weeks we'll put that on. So it's been three weeks since we seeded these carrots and even after many years of being a farmer, I'm still worried about whether my carrot seeds are gonna germinate. It, it, they're just so finicky about it. Um, but we got really lucky here. Um, I was very vigilant about watering uh, regularly and we got pretty decent germination. But because we did it by hand, gonna have to come along and just pinch out a few so that the ones that are left can get nice and big and look awesome because that, that's what you want you want them to just when you pull them out you just get this beautiful long pointy carrot
Okay, now that they're wonderfully thinned out, we're gonna come back in probably about six weeks time and uh, hopefully we should start to have carrots then. We'll take a look. So if you recall, a few weeks ago, I opened it up and uh, uh, the bees were doing great, uh, but they needed some time before we put on a honey super. Uh, in the meantime, I fear that the hive may have split and that's where half of the hive goes off and starts another hive. I'm hoping that's not the case, but I'm gonna open it up today. Everything looks good. We're gonna add a honey super. You know, if not, we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do about it. You gonna grab some honey? Good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. So it, it seems like they have not split. Uh, we're actually the perfect time to put on a honey super. They're making honey, right Riv? Mm -hmm. It's delicious. It's delicious? It's been eight weeks since we put the seed in the ground to start these carrots. And it's only been a couple of weeks since we last checked them. And if you remember, they're just tiny little things. But in just those few days, they've grown and now we have baby carrots. And so we can start to harvest something and make a wonderful lunch. And that's what my plan is today is to just pull out a few of these little baby carrots and make something wonderful. We still have a few weeks until we get nice large carrots but they're gonna be sweet and wonderful. Waiting for these baby carrots allowed the garden to really fill in. So in addition to the carrots, there is so much bounty to choose from as the garden enters early summer. I grabbed some parsley and oregano. I also can't resist the young white onions. And the tender kale will make a great base for the salad. Finally, some green garlic.
I'm gonna make a beautiful salad using these baby carrots. I'm gonna cook them in the skillet for just a very little because they're just gonna be so wonderful at this stage. Sweet, delicious. And I'm gonna pair that with some chorizo style meatballs. I'm gonna make the meatballs first. I'm gonna clear this away and uh, get those cooking. I add the smoked paprika, chili powder, and chopped green garlic to the ground pork. Fresh oregano is a must in my chorizo. I have the chorizo style meatballs ready to go. And now I'm gonna start working on the simple carrot, kale, onion, parsley salad. It's gonna be fantastic. After prepping the carrots, I destem the kale and chop it along with the fresh onion. Mince the parsley and then a simple vinaigrette of wine vinegar, oil, salt, and pepper. a little mustard to hold it together. Saute the carrots until golden and brown the meatballs. Add the onions to the carrots and let them get to know each other while I put together the rest of the salad. Then I get all the veg into a bowl, dress, and give it a good toss. Get the meatballs on top while still sizzling. Fantastic. It's just been eight weeks since we put the seed in the soil and we got beautiful baby carrots to make this beautiful carrot kale salad with some chorizo style meatballs. Simple, easy, and baby carrots are just the best. Mm. It's so good. That's great. So this year I got a bumper crop of carrots, which is great. 
but now I've got to figure out what to do with them and I have more carrots coming. So I'm going to put some into storage. So if you have a place in your house where you can keep the right temperature, you can store carrots all winter long. You can store them for many, many months. And it's all about temperature and moisture. And the temperature you want to get as close to 35 degrees as you can. Uh, any, you know, as you go higher and higher in temperature, the, the shorter that the carrots are going to last. And you want to be able to keep the moisture in the carrots. And a good way to do that is with sand. Sand is a nice way to store it if you're not storing too many carrots. Uh, you can also, you know, a, a, a small amount of carrots, you can, you know, put them in a plastic bag in the fridge and you may get a month out of them. Uh, this is for a much longer term storage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the greens off and I'm going to put them in the sand and layer them and then just cover it all with sand. And what that's going to do is keep the moisture in the carrots. Really what you're doing is just mimicking what carrots do naturally, which is they stay in the ground over winter and then they flower the next year and produce seed. So that's what you're doing. You're just mimicking that so they're going to be staying alive inside that sand and you'll be eating carrots uh, all winter long. Can I help, Papa? Yeah, you want to take the tops off? Sure. You got to take all the green off. Oh, that's a big one. Where do I put this guy? So after you got them stored in the sand, what you want to do is just keep them in a place where they can't be eaten by animals, where it's dark, you don't want a lot of sunlight, and you want to keep that temperature low. The lower you can, the better, but you don't want them to freeze. And these will last well into uh, next spring. It's a great day to take a little bit of honey from the hive. We've been checking it all season and the bees are healthy they've been making honey so it's time to take a little bit for me just my share so i'm going to grab the kids i'm going to open up the hive light the smoker grab a few frames and then we're going to bring them down to the barn kitchen where we're going to extract it and jar it and then i can use the honey for cooking and the kids love it and it's going to be impossible for me to keep their fingers out of the hive to steal some honey because they just love it so much. Don't drop it. So I'm replacing the three frames that I took. I don't want to take too much from the bees. I want them to be able to have honey through the winter. 
And it's just middle of summer, so they have all the rest of the season to collect nectar, make some honey. I'm gonna put another super on top so they can make even more honey. And then they'll be nice and healthy come spring. So the frames are back from the hive. We're in the kitchen and look at these things. They're just loaded with honey, right? And they weigh a few pounds. They're all capped. So the first thing we need to do is to break the cap on all of the little honeycomb cells so that the honey will flow out. Once I break the cap, so we're gonna put it in the extractor, spin it, spin the honey out, and then we'll jar it. We may have to filter it a bit just to get the, uh, a bit of the wax out, but I don't like to filter my honey too much. I just want to get the big chunks out. All right, so are you gonna give me some help with this? Mm -hmm. So what we do is we're gonna, just with a fork, carefully break those little, see those little round caps? Mm -hmm. We're just taking those off. It's not hard to do, but you want to be very gentle with it. Otherwise, the honey will all come flowing out when we turn it over. Okay, I'll store it up at the top. This is like tons of little mini honey jars for them, right? Mm-hmm. That's okay, you'll clean it up, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That honey is like really sticky. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get this first one in there. You hold it right here, but make sure your hands don't get inside of the spinner, okay? I'm gonna get right over here. We're gonna spin it as fast as we can. I want it to spin it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready? That's your spoon ready, Zoe? So we're giving the honey back to the bees. All the honey that's left in the comb that we couldn't get out, the bees are gonna come and they're gonna drink it back up and bring it back in the hive. One of them's gonna come and he's gonna go tell all his friends to come and get it. It's harvest day for the carrots, and that's a really exciting day because you never quite know what you're gonna pull up, right? We're hoping for some beautiful roots, nice, long, thick, healthy, very orange carrots. It's been many weeks since we put the seed in the ground and we thinned them out. We've been taking really good care of them. The greens look amazing, but right now we're gonna find out what lies beneath the soil and uh, hopefully our efforts have been well rewarded.
have to say this is a score. I mean, these are beautiful carrots. These are just wonderful, fantastic. And I know they're gonna be great. And so for this carrot meal, I got a few other things I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grab the potatoes from the garden. I'm gonna grab uh, some onions and uh, a special ingredient, which I have, I'm not growing in the garden, but I'm growing at the farm. And that's um, ginger. Uh, it's a wonderful root vegetable that is going to add incredible depth of flavor to what I'm making. I'm gonna bring these back to the barn and on the way I'm gonna grab some of the ginger from the farm and some fresh eggs from the chicken coop. Hey, you gotta move. I have some beautiful carrots from the garden and I'm really excited about cooking with them. And I'm gonna make three different dishes with carrots to star. Uh, the first is a carrot burger kind of pancake thing and it's combined with some ginger. Ginger just goes wonderfully with carrots. It's just such a perfect combination and I'm lucky I grow ginger here on the farm. And I grabbed a little bit of cilantro because uh, I thought cilantro would go really great with this. There's a little bit of uh, garbanzo bean flour, which is ground up garbanzo beans. Mix it with some eggs, nice and simple. After that, I'm gonna make a soup with carrots, ginger, onions, potatoes, some chicken stock, easy, fantastic. And then finally, a classic roasted glazed carrots with some beautiful honey from the farm going to be great. When we moved out of the city and first started growing, just at the beginning of our farm, it was magical seeing vegetables grow. I would marvel at it. I know it happens everywhere across the planet, but when you grow it yourself, it seems like you have achieved something amazing. Growing onions from seed, perfect potatoes, a taste of butter, and of course, pulling great sweet carrots out of the ground are all things I continue <laughs> to be proud of. I try to share that amazement with the kids, but for them, it is normal now. I guess that is a better and greater achievement. I'm gonna leave the pancake burgers uh, on the side just to let sit for a while. And I'm gonna start on the soup, which the soup is just gonna be carrots, potatoes, onions, ginger, a little cream, chicken stock. We're gonna get it up on the uh, grill and get it cooking. And uh, yeah, it shouldn't take long and it's really simple. I never thought of myself as creative artistically. I don't paint or write poetry or play a musical instrument, but I appreciate and greatly admire those who are able to do these things. 
A wonderful example is my friend, the incredibly talented Gregory Isakoff, whose music you are hearing right now. That kind of art is at the pinnacle of human endeavors. It is truly a wonder to be able to express yourself in that way. I do, however, treat my farm and cooking as an artistic expression in my very minor and humble way. These are things we can all do in our lives. Adding aesthetics and passion to the way we live, into the simple things, be it food or our vegetable garden, or what we choose to surround ourselves with. We are all artists in how we choose to live. Carrots are not an easy crop to grow. 
you know, they take time, they're hard to germinate, you have to thin them out, and you never know what you're gonna get until you pull them out. Luckily, we had a great season. We pulled out some beautiful carrots. And we're able to cook a delicious meal with the carrots that we grew ourselves. Cheers. Remember when our songs were just like prayer Like gospel hymns that you call in the air While we finish up our meal, why don't you head over to NeverSinkFarm.com for more information on growing your own vegetables. Until my simple house and rang and rang Oh.